Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted to go through the new update that I've just noticed uh, has been released for our Asus Rapture GTA AX11000 uh, router. Um, so as we can see here this was only released on the 6th of October 2021 so it was only a few days ago at the time of filming uh, that's just been released. So as you can see here it does have uh, six um, issues um, that it's fixed. Uh, four uh, out of the six are actually vulnerabilities um, that it's actually fixing as well so it's always good to see that security is on their uh, mind as well when they're doing these updates. Uh, it's good to see the updates are coming through monthly as well now and quite quickly uh, from Asus so that's really good. Um, they seem to be really have stepped up their game uh, on updates and especially for the GTA AX 11,000 I think perhaps it's come even though it's been out for quite a while now it's come a bit more popular because people are working from home and of course the amount of devices uh, everyone needs now and of course it's still not a cheap uh, router uh, by any means but it does have a lot of features and I think it is very much worth it so as I said uh, four out of these are actually vulnerabilities that it's fixing and two are just issues that um, it's fixing with uh, within the actual uh, router uh, firmware and uh, when you're using it. So we'll go into more detail in a minute. So if you haven't seen any of my videos before, how you check for the uh, firmware upgrade using the uh, web UI um, is when you normally log in using your Safari, Chrome or Firefox um, or uh, Microsoft Edge. Um, browser you log in you find your IP address of your uh, router and then you can just go into administration and then firmware upgrade um, also you might start seeing a small little bell um, that's flashing that means actually there's a firmware um, update available so as you can see here you do have the option where you can have the uh, router actually auto firmware upgrade by itself I prefer to it's just my personal preference to have that switched off um, due to I prefer to have the actual uh, the firmware when it comes out just to make sure there's no issues and everything because I've mentioned before I use this uh, router for my um, daily home so basically I rely on it for connecting our CCTV, the IP cameras, um, from working from home and streaming of course, so all of our devices. So I don't want to upgrade uh, and then find out there's issues with the firmware. So I normally leave that off and I manually check myself. But again, if you're someone that just wants to plug the uh, router in um, and forget about it, then I would advise you then best to actually switch that on. Um, because at least then you're getting the security updates come through and everything. Uh, as you can see here, the signature version, you don't normally need to uh, manually do that. This one will automatically uh, update these uh, by itself. So again, all you have to do is just quickly check and you'll see that the uh, basically the router is actually checking with Asus to see if there's any updates. So as you can see on the AX11000, there's, the, uh, there's an update. And then you can see on my RTAC86U um, that I've got connected by AI Mesh. Um, you can see that it's already on the latest firmware, so there's no update on this. Because this is an older model, uh, Asus uh, are not so getting out the update so quick. Um, so, of course, we've got the updates here. So, then all you do is then once you've done that, you just go to the firmware upgrade and it'll start to download it and um, it will automatically uh, restart your uh, router um, once it's finished. What I normally like to do as well is ju just as a best practice kind of thing is that just to uh, once it's upgraded I normally just switch it off using the power button on the back and unplug it for five minutes and then plug it back in. It just clears the memory and everything else and of course don't forget like if you think like mine the uh, router is on 24-7 um, and I never switch it off so it's good sometimes just to let it uh, have a rest for at least a few minutes um, before you need to plug it back in. Uh, so if we go back then to the actual update so you can see here um, we've got six items as we said before 
So the first one was to do was fixing the AI mesh uh, web page. So that's around the multi language issue. So I know some of you probably had I didn't have it in my experience myself, but uh, there was supposed to be an issue on the AI mesh page within the uh, router um, that you could go on there and if you're changing in multiple languages, it wouldn't display properly. And there was issues there. So I think they fixed that as well. Secondly, they fixed the Let's Encrypt issue. So again, that's with the dynamic DNS. So if you're choosing the Asus one or no IP or any of those other services um, that give you a web address. So something like um, uh, router.myrouter.com um, instead of your IP address. Um, that's what the services is what it means, but also it makes it secure. So Let's Encrypt is a service that's free and it gives you a like um, secure certificate, SSL certificate, and that basically makes gives you a padlock. Uh, so like when you go online banking or you go to most websites now, you see a lock next to them um, and they're secure. So that's what it's doing is instead of encrypting and self signing to certificates, you get like warnings. Instead, this time it's actually giving you a, a proper certificate um, that's signed by an official uh, certificate authority. So it's always good to have. Uh, so now we're starting on to the vulnerabilities that's actually within the um, they're fixed. So the third one is the they're fixed the stored uh, XX uh, sorry stored XSS vulnerability. So what that stands for is in in simple terms. Uh, is a cross-site scripting um, so you might ask what that is so basically it's a it's a common attack um, that basically hackers use to inject malicious code into vulnerable applications or web applications so um, how XSS differs from normal uh, attacks is that like other attacks like SQL like database injections is that it does not directly target the application itself Instead, the users of the web application are the ones that are at risk. So again, depending on the severity of the attack, this can lead to user accounts being compromised and viruses or Trojan horses um, and also pages being modified. Um, so that basically misleads users or like us when we log into the page or something. It will look like the genuine page, but actually it's doing something else. Um, so again, this is why it's always good to have the um, the web actually uh, GUI, um, so the web interface, the page there for the uh, router, uh, actually having that switched off on the WAN port so you can't access it from the internet. I know that does disable the app use um, and there's probably um, different ways of looking at it, but I'm more security conscious, so that's why I switch it off. And if I do need to access um, the router when I'm away I use the, the built-in VPN that's into the router as well instead and then access the router that way um, but of course if if you want something again like simple and you don't want to worry about all these China troubles and of course the problem um, of having to use a VPN and things like that then you can have it set up so it accesses the WAN port. And that's why the Let's Encrypt um, certificates is so important as well. Uh, so you don't get the warning and everything is properly encrypted. So that's the first issue that they've actually done. And again, it doesn't go into specific details, but that's what a cross-site scripting uh, common attack is normally. It's just where they inject malicious code into an application or in our, our case it's uh, soft software or the little bits of software that's within our firmware that runs on our uh, routers. Uh, so fourth is the two CVE. So we've gone through these ones, uh, what a CVE is pre in previous videos on the uh, firmware. So we had quite a lot of updates in the previous firmware update. Um, and you can see the video uh, in my playlist um, if you're interested. Um, so again, there's no, I've actually looked these up and I can't actually find um, the published information, the specific details on these two vulnerabilities. Um, so once I do find out more information, I'll put them in the comments and then pin it to the top so you can have a look. But right now there, there's no specific details on those, but it's good to see that they're actually fixing these 
and hopefully before they're published and so before bad hackers or bad people get hold of a uh, working way of doing it and understand how to use it and then use it as a vulnerability against our routers and everything else so they're fixing it before the general public knows so that's good uh, so on the uh, second to last so number five uh, we've got here it's uh, fixed the stack overflow vulnerability um, again it's good to see that they're taking contributions and uh, things from other people uh, to help out so again, around the stack overflow vulnerability, um, to break it down, basically, um, stack overflow is, is a type of buffer overflow, overflow vulnerability. Let me get my words out. Um, so you've got to think of it as probably the straight, easiest way to think of it, and as a good terminology that I've um, been told before, is that think of it as a glass and that glass has a capacity so if you start pouring milk into that glass eventually the milk is going to spill or overflow and that's similar to what this is so when we enter data into that buffer more than its capacity the data overflows to adjacent memory locations and that causes the program to crash um, so this is known as buffer overflow um, so I think you've probably heard this fully around it's been around quite an old vulnerabilities kind of thing buffer overflows for a long time um, so of course again this is not good for um, our routers um, as well because you know if we end up crashing them and if they find a way to do it they can probably inject code as well into it but most of the time it'd be a more of annoyance because they'll be able to crash our routers and everything else uh, remotely and uh, we won't be able to uh, stop it and of course then our wi-fi cuts out and everything else so that's always good to see that they're commonly um, updating these parts and looking at all the different programs as we've seen before in that that's actually built into the firmware uh, so lastly um, to go through is the fixed um, information disclosure vulnerability and again as we can see here that's from a uh, third party so I think there's a few companies there um, that have actually gone there and done the testing and disclosed this to actually um, to Asus um, or they've actually done this as a vulnerability against an actual program that like we've seen in other videos where um, as we know that the firmware contains lots of different programs within that firmware and of course they're made by lots of different people um, so it does affect uh, it's the only problem when you're using so much complication here because you know this router has VPNs, traffic monitoring, it has uh, you know uh, family protection, AI protection, AI mesh. Um, it has lots of all the thing, things that we want, um, and, but of course that makes it more complicated um, and of course causes more issues and everything else. So it's good they're seeing they're fixing this one. So the information disclosure of vulnerability again. There's no specific information of course Asus won't probably disclose this um, because it perhaps will affect them somehow um, but it doesn't say that there's anything's been released or you know information's been leaked from our routers or anything like that uh, so information disclosure um, so it's like an information also known I think they disclose it as an information leakage as well so it normally it's not unintentionally um, like in our case it's the uh, router um, unintentionally reveals sensitive information to its users so it's like a, a you know and potential attacker uh, could then use that information that it gets from there um, so that could be user names or the information that's traveling over the network and things like that or about the websites you're visiting um, so again this is why it's always good to lock down your um, router so it doesn't actually um, have um, you can't actually access it from all these settings and everything else from the uh, external WAN port or the from the internet um, it just helps gives you a bit more security but again I do understand that some people won't like to switch it on because I like using the app and also make life much simpler um, that they can access it from when they're away from home and things like that so it's understandable um, so again yeah the things that we can some examples of the information disclosure it could be is that it could provide 
it's not just our personal information, but also it could be something that uh, Asus in the firmware don't want to show us. So it could be like hidden folders or directories, uh, their structure, the contents of certain files and listings, uh, source code or temporary backup folders. Um, it could be error logs and it could be like API keys or even IP addresses and database credentials um, that they could be, you know, somehow us as a user could access um, or someone on our network could access our like via the guest network and things like that. Again, this is not um, Asus uh, has not been specific about what this information disclosure vulnerability is. Um, but this is the kind of things that normally that will give you an idea of what, what the reason is behind it. And it's good to see they've fixed it. So uh, that's all the updates for our GTAX 11,000. Um, so I'd just like to quickly make a note that, of course, you know, we have a new uh, router that's uh, come out and that's the uh, AXE 11,000, so as you can see here. Um, as in previous videos, I've discussed all, for, all about differences between Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E and what the benefits are and things like that. Uh, one thing I just want to note is that there is a new firmware out. So since uh, September, um, then uh, you, you do have um, a new version. So if you do have the GTAX E 11000 and that's the Wi-Fi 6E uh, router, then um, do download this as we previous in my previous video, um, you'll see that this fixes a lot of security issues and vulnerabilities. Um, so if you do want to know all the details about all of this, then again, see my previous video. Um, and even though it's relating to the AX11000, all of these issues are exactly the same as that one and it fixes them. So go back to that one and see there. So as I just wanted to quickly say is that yes, um, it's quite good to see that this uh, new router has uh, come out and everything. But it is a bit strange that you would presume that as this is the newest model that the firmware perhaps normally what these manufacturers do is they seem to, uh, as soon as a new model comes out, they concentrate on that and give the updates to that instead first. But it seems to be the other way around. As you can see, the last update here was the 29th. And this was our previous update that we received. Um, on our AX11000. So it seems to be the newer uh, router, uh, the AXE11000 actually seems to be getting its up firmware and security updates slower than the older model, that's our one. Um, so it just seems a bit strange to me, um, but hopefully Asus will probably line them up and everything else, because there's not really too much difference in the, between the routers and between the firmware and the, you know, and the hardware kind of thing. Um, except for the, the new 6 gigahertz frequency and the chipset inside. So yeah, so just a, a quick note there just to see you know what people's comments and what they think about it as well as if you've got an AXE 11000, um, just to say that you should update as well. Okay, so uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been a bit helpful to you and um, have a great day and thanks for watching.